What if I told you the Kurdish people are not Arab, Persian, or Turk, but something far older? Their DNA revealed a truth that rewrites the story of Middle East itself. For decades, the origins of the Kurds have been debated. Politicians, historians, and even neighboring nations have all tried to claim the Kurds as something they are not. But now, modern science has spoken. And what it shows is shocking. Genetic evidence shows that the Kurdish people descend directly from some of the world's very first farmers. The story of their ancestry begins not in recent centuries, but at the birth of civilization itself. But before we dive in, tell me in the comments, where are you watching from? And what do you know about your own ancestry? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Recent genetic studies analyzed Kurdish DNA across Iraq, Turkey, Iran, and Syria. The results were clear. Kurds are not a branch of Arabs. They are not descended from Turks. And they are not Persians who forgot their past. Instead, the Kurds show direct continuity with ancient peoples of the Fertile Crescent, the cradle of civilization. DNA points to roots in the Zagros Mountains, where some of the first humans learned to farm. In fact, Kurds today carry markers that link them back to those very farmers who turned wild grains into crops. Think about that. The same mountains where agriculture began, the same valleys where cities first rose, are the ancestral home of today's Kurdish people. To understand how deep this goes, we need to go back to Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers Tigris and Euphrates. Thousands of years ago, this was the birthplace of cities, writing, and law. It was here that the Sumerians built temples, the Babylonians carved their codes, and the Assyrians raised mighty empires. And right on the edges of these civilizations, in the rugged mountains, lived the ancestors of the Kurds. Some historians connect them with the Hurrians, an ancient people of northern Mesopotamia. Others point to the Medes, an Indo-Iranian group that helped topple the Assyrian Empire. The Kurds are not just descended from one ancient tribe. Instead, they carry the genetic legacy of many of the region's earliest peoples, all blended together, but preserved by their mountains. For centuries, outsiders argued over who the Kurds really were. Some claimed they were simply mountain Turks. Others dismissed them as Persians who lost their language. Some even suggested they were Arabs who migrated north. But science has shattered those myths. Kurds are not a mere branch of another nation. They are an ancient people in their own right. Their DNA doesn't just overlap with neighbors. It shows unique markers that set them apart. This is not just about blood. It's about identity. For the Kurds, often denied a state of their own, these findings confirm what their oral traditions have always said. They are older than the empires that surround them. Now, let's ask a dangerous question. What if the Kurds had their own country? Imagine it, a nation built on the backbone of an ancestry older than most civilizations, a homeland that stretches across the Zagros Mountains, rich in oil, water, and culture, a state where the people who survived Assyrians, Persians, Arabs, and Ottomans finally stood on their own. For many Kurds, this is more than a dream. It is the destiny history has denied them. After the First World War, when empires collapsed and new nations were drawn on maps, the Kurds were promised a state. But the promise was broken. Instead, their land was carved into pieces, divided among Turkey, Iraq, Syria, and Iran. What if a people with one of the deepest genetic lineages on Earth had been given a chance to build their own state? That question is not just history. It is hope, and the fire still burns in the hearts of millions. In the Zagros Mountains, Kurdish land, some of the earliest humans left their mark. At Shanidar Cave, scientists found burials of Neanderthals who lived there over 60,000 years ago. Later, when modern humans arrived, they stayed in the same valleys. They began to plant seeds, tame animals, and create villages. The Kurds are not newcomers to this land. Their story stretches so far back that it reaches the dawn of humanity itself you can still walk through the ruins of this past. At Jarmo, in Iraqi Kurdistan, archaeologists uncovered one of the world's first farming villages, people grinding grain, keeping goats, building houses. In the same highlands, Gobekli Tepe and Sayonu rose, where early humans carved stones 
and built shrines before cities even existed. These are not just random sites on a map. They are the fingerprints of the ancestors of today's Kurds, showing a line of life that never broke, from the first farmers to the people still calling the Zagros home. So how do Kurds compare to the peoples around them? With Arabs there is shared ancestry, but the Kurdish gene pool is distinct, leaning far older in Mesopotamian roots. With Persians, Kurds share Indo-Iranian heritage, but Kurds show closer ties to the ancient Zagros farmers. With Turks, the difference is even sharper. Turks carry Central Asian ancestry, while Kurds remain tied to the Fertile Crescent. With Armenians and Assyrians, there are overlaps. After all, they shared the same mountains, but Kurds kept their own genetic identity. While neighboring populations often absorbed waves of newcomers, the Kurds, protected in their mountains, preserved their ancient lineage. Why did this happen? Why did Kurds remain so distinct? The answer lies in geography. The Zagros Mountains are both harsh and protective. They isolated Kurdish tribes from invaders, while at the same time forcing them to depend on each other. Mountains create resilience. While great empires rose and fell in the fertile plains, the Kurds endured in their valleys and peaks. Their DNA became a time capsule, carrying the story of the world's first civilizations. When the Persians built their vast empire, the Medes, often linked to Kurdish origins, played a key role in shaping its foundations. Still, the mountains gave the Kurds a shield, a space where they could live by their own customs, even as kings ruled from distant capitals. Then came the Arab conquests. Islam spread, dynasties rose, but the Kurds were never erased. Kurdish leaders served as generals and scholars. In their villages and valleys, they preserved their culture and sense of being something distinct. Centuries later, the Ottoman and Persian empires fought over Kurdish lands like chess pieces. Borders shifted, armies marched, treaties were signed. But when the smoke cleared, the mountains still echoed with Kurdish voices. This is the pattern of Kurdish history. Empires write themselves into glory, only to collapse. But their DNA today is living proof of that survival. Faith has always been part of survival. The Kurds today are mostly Muslim, but some still keep Yazidism, one of the oldest religions in the world. It carries echoes of Mesopotamian gods, fire worship, and ancient rituals that long predate Islam or Christianity. Even in Islam, Kurdish names shine, the most famous being Saladin, the warrior who united Muslims and defeated the Crusaders. But beyond politics and power, the real survival was in the villages, where Newroz, the Kurdish New Year, still lights bonfires to celebrate spring. These traditions are not borrowed. They are pieces of memory carried across thousands of years. Genetics is only half the story. Culture is the other. The Kurdish language belongs to the Indo-Iranian family, linking them to ancient Persia. Their music carries echoes of old traditions, with instruments and rhythms passed down for generations. Their oral stories, about warriors, love, exile, and survival, have kept their sense of identity alive. But why should this matter to us now? Because history is not just about the past, it shapes the present. Today, Kurds live across Iraq, Turkey, Iran, and Syria. They are often minorities, denied independence. Some are told they don't exist as a separate people, but science now says otherwise. The DNA proves that Kurds are not a recent invention. They are one of the world's oldest continuous peoples. So here is the shocking truth. Kurds are not merely descendants of others. They stand as one of the founding pillars of human history. Their DNA links them to the people who invented farming, built the first villages, and laid the foundations of civilization. In their blood is the memory of Mesopotamia. In their mountains, the survival of ancient humanity. And as we look at their story, we are reminded of something greater, that identity is not erased by empires. It is carried, quietly, in the human heart and in the code of life itself. So the next time someone asks, who are the Kurds? The answer is simple. They are one of the last living links to the world's first civilizations. And that is not just history, it is a story of survival. 
Before you go, tell me in the comments, how does the Kurdish story connect with your own roots? I read every reply, and your voice keeps this history alive. If you found this video eye-opening, don't stop here. Check out my other videos on ancient genetics, hidden histories, and the untold roots of civilizations. I promise you, each one will change the way you see the world. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join this community. Together, we're uncovering the stories empires tried to bury and rewriting the history written in our DNA. Because the past isn't gone, it's alive in us and in every story we choose to tell.